This program is brought to you by NewsWorks in cooperation with the City of Eau Claire. This program is simulcast on WRFBLP 101.9. All right, I think we'll call the meeting to order. <clears throat> Thank you for coming to the Planning Commission meeting tonight for October the 2nd of 2017. If you do plan to speak during tonight's meeting, there is a yellow piece of paper on the back counter. Please fill that out and then hand it to Ned up front there. Um, please turn off or turn to silent your cell phone so that we're not interrupted. And then we attempt to uh, conduct our meetings in a relatively informal manner. So the way that it works is the city will make first make its presentation. Then we ask the applicant to come forward. Once the applicant has spoken, we do open it for public hearing. Please try and keep your comments fresh. Um, and not repeat what the person before you said. At the end of the public comments, we will close the public hearing and then we will take consideration on the action. The first item on our agenda tonight is a public hearing for recommendation, comprehensive plan amendment rezoning R3 to C2P, women's shelter at 2306 and 2320 Frank Street. Uh, this is the property located on Frank Street, east of North Claremont Avenue. There is commercial zoning to the west and then residential zoning surrounding the property. And there's an aerial photo showing the two existing assisted living facilities on the property. That's Quick Trip. It's a small apartment. These are duplexes. These are two fourplexes. Uh, this does include a comprehensive plan amendment, so we did place in your packet the comprehensive plan map. Areas shown in red are commercial, areas shown in yellow are residential. And the comprehensive plan amendment is to take that little white box and propose to change it from yellow to red so we understand that. And there are some pictures of the existing facilities also uh, within your packet. Uh, there were various uh, narratives provided by applicant explaining this request that we also included in your packet. The applicant is proposing to use the two existing buildings on this site as 11 units for family and seven units for single women with parking for up to 10 staff for the Hope Gospel Mission Women's Facility. Uh, in terms of the comprehensive plan amendment, uh, it does, the land use map currently identifies the site as being appropriate for residential development. Again, there is commercial to the west and then residential shown to the north, east, and south. The proposed use, a treatment facility, which needs commercial zoning under the terms of the zoning code. Rezonings by state law must be consistent with a comprehensive plan. For this reason, applicant requested the plan commission initiate public hearings to consider a comprehensive plan amendment. The plan commission requested staff to set up public hearings for the comprehensive plan amendment and with that request to hold the rezoning hearings concurrently. So you could consider both at the same time, have one hearing, and we could provide notification to property owners. We attached in your packet the criteria list for a comprehensive plan amendment to be considered in reviewing such a request. And we would note the following. Uh, the change will not create an adverse impact on the public facilities and services for this property. The change will use the existing buildings on the property with limited remodeling. The change will not impact the natural environment. The applicant's narrative notes a community need for this facility and the change does not impact any historic structures. <coughs> In terms of the rezoning, the proposed C2P zoning of the property is consistent with other similar facilities like this women's facility that we have in our community. It allows a treatment facility as a permitted use and then dwelling units by conditional use permit. Uh, the narrative that is provided by applicants states the various activities that occur within this facility. Uh, and this request then does include a conditional use permit for the dwelling units within the building. As previously noted, the request includes 11 units for families, seven units for single women, 
parking for up to 10 staff persons on site and they do have an 18 stall parking lot that exists on this property. Again, we place in the report the criteria for review of rezonings. Uh, we would note that this is a planned development rezoning, meaning it's specific for the request being made. The narratives provided by applicant is the specific request for this planned development. And any change in uh, that general development plan or those narratives does require plan commission review and city council approval. Uh, we did inspect the site and found that all site improvements required by city code are in place. Uh, we would note that changing the zoning to commercial does require screening along the north and east property lines. We do believe the screening in place along the north property line with existing vegetation is sufficient and we are recommending a fence be provided along the east property line. Uh, the Planning Commission will need to find compliance with the various criteria we noted in the report to approve the request. Your motion to approve should be both for the comprehensive plan amendment and the rezoning which also includes the conditional use permit and a condition is recommended with that permit that provide screening along that east lot line. Are there any questions? Are there any questions for Daryl? Please raise your hand because I can't see any lights. <laughs> Nobody has anything. Oh, I, oh. I did come up with one. Commissioner Grandland. Uh, is, I guess this is in a way slightly administrative about how the facility is used, but with the children present in it, is it in any way comparable to a child care facility? Uh, no, our understanding is to spend the night, which means it's more like a dwelling unit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions for Daryl? Commissioner Radabell. Daryl, is, is the use similar currently to what they're planned? So should the other one have been commercial already? Or? Uh, there are other facilities within the community are all commercial. I want to cross the road, which is their existing room and facility also has a conditional use permit. Uh, I guess I was thinking the, the current use. I think, is it a oh, facility? the uh, assisted living facility uh, is a, a CBRF. And under state law, they have uh, certain exemptions and are allowed within residential district. Had this been a CBRF, uh, we could have uh, run it through as an amendment to the CBRF licensing, but they do not choose to license that way. Mm -hmm. Very good. Any other questions? I don't see any at this time. Thank you. Is the applicant here? Craig Peterson, Operations Director with Hope Gospel Mission. I thank you for hearing this tonight. And uh, in preparing for this, I look back at our records. You know, we've been before you multiple times in the past. Uh, starting in the late 90s and uh, when we opened our women's home across the street in 2004 and in our files I found a bunch of recommendation letters from Sheriff Kramer and Beacon and Bolton and Community Table. You know we approached you at that time and said we, we see a need. Um, we have a men's home and we're turning away single women that don't have housing today and we want to help with that. And you granted us a conditional use and a, a change of zoning and we've had hundreds of women that have come through the former Cassidy's grocery store building on ways to uh, steps to rebuilding their life. The toughest part about that over the years has probably been having to say no to all the women that come to our door with children. Um, back then it was maybe once a month we would see a mom with kids that couldn't get into Beacon or couldn't find family help and that type of thing. Now it's about once a week. Um, last week I had a business owner call me and I've known him for 30 years and he said his 30 year old daughter is on his couch with their uh, eight and 10 year old children and his landlord found out and she's gonna be homeless out of her car and all of the resources in the community have a waiting list. What do I do with her? And I said, I don't have an answer today, but we have an answer that we wanna bring forward to the community. We're not the only answer. This community is a network. We have great resources in city housing and Beacon and Bolton and Sojourner, but Hope Gospel's part of the answer. And the only way that we can do that is with your permission on this property. Uh, we have lots of technical um, answers. If you have questions about what we're going to do in the facility, Chris Hedlin, our program director, is here tonight to answer those. Um, with that, I'll just open it up if you have any questions and sit down. Okay. Are there any questions for the applicant? Yeah. Eric, uh, <laughs> Commissioner Larson, go ahead. Thank you. 
Uh, I noticed in a letter that uh, you sent to the uh, neighborhood that you had an open house uh, looks like back on August 10th. I was just wondering what was the response for that? We had approximately 10 people come to that open house. Uh, some were from other agencies, a number were from the neighborhood, and then the press, a uh, number of different folks from the press came. Uh, we had no negative concerns. What we had were people coming and saying, we want you in our neighborhood. One woman came and said, my daughter is addicted and my grandchildren are in trouble. How do I get them into something soon enough you're not going to come soon enough for my family what what resources are out there and we had to refer to other resources for now but um, the community response and some of those community members are here tonight and I believe they're going to speak um, was a hundred percent positive we from our door-to-door -door activity and we knocked on all the homes within the, um, the notification the 500 foot um, and our several hundred letters we sent out and our press conference and all of the other things we've done um, we have had no negative response from neighbors, anyone in the city. Good, thank you. Are there any other questions for the applicant? Commissioner Peters, Peterson, sorry. It says here you're gonna have 11 units for families. That That's for mothers with children. Would you have any children without their mothers or guardians? We would not. Okay, can you explain to me in your FAQ sheet on the uh, first one, why are we adding another facility? What you mean by programming for children? Uh, the children are going through trauma just like the adults that are at our door. And so we have counselors on staff that are, are uh, trained uh, counselors that work with the children. We do not plan to take them out of their schools. One of the most stable things that are in these children's life is their local school and their teachers and their friends. And so we don't plan to duplicate uh, education on site or try to replace public education but we're talking about trauma counseling you know what for a lot of these kids cooking is driving through McDonald's drive through yeah. so it may be learning how to make something other than mac and cheese with mom I mean it, this is basic activities of daily living that a lot of us take for granted when these kids are hopping couches and not knowing who's gonna pick them up after school each night they're missing a lot of the basic elements of that we all take for granted growing up so a lot of it's just Life 101, doing it daily with the moms and the kids in the facility. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Mitchell. Thank you, and regarding the site plan, uh, did you do you have any problem with putting up a fence on the east side? We do not. Okay. Any other questions? I have one. Um, for, can you give me your definition of family? How many children are would be allowed per unit? You know, it, Chris Hedlund maybe would be the better person to speak to that specific answer, if that's okay. okay. Some of it will be limited by the space in the room. We can only have a couple bunk beds in each room. Okay. So uh, larger families, we may have to split up into two rooms. But some women will only have one child. Some women might have two. Two is about the average we see. Um, I don't think we've seen too many people come to our door with like more than four. Okay. You know, that's a four is kind of a big family and that's pretty rare. Usually it's one or two. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? I don't see any. Thank you. This is a public hearing, so we will open it up for public comment. If you're coming forward, please bring along your yellow slip of paper and hand it to Ned and then introduce yourself with your name and your address. Is there anyone who'd like to speak to this issue? Is there anyone? Come forward. Hi, my name is Lynette and um, my address, Lynette Moran, my address is S12748 US Highway 53, Osceola, Wisconsin. Um, I am one of the people who has benefited from Hope Gospel Mission. I was a resident there about 10 years ago. I have November 1st will be my 10 year anniversary. I have three children. So this is a very important thing to me to have a spot for women with children because when I was in treatment, I had to go through all of the coping skills and learn all of those things but I didn't have the basic training for being a parent. 
I was 22 years of an alcoholic, and I didn't even know how to do normal things. So having time to play with your child and have it be supervised or learning new things that could be beneficial, and so you are training your child up in a fashion that is healthy is so important. I, I remember going through a period of time where I didn't even know if I was going to be able to stay for a period because my kids were elsewhere, I felt pulled, I didn't want to be away from them, and so I had all of these things tugging at me, and the last thing I wanted to give up was being healthy, but I so desperately wanted to be with my kids. And I couldn't figure out how I could do it and be, you know, who I was, but get sober and get healthy so I could be the best mom I could. And so the periods that I had the kids, you know, it was like three hours here and there. And, you know, it was hard because I really couldn't, I couldn't do things that normal people can. Who knows what normal is? But I think if we take and we generalize our, our lives and we learn those coping skills and we do that with our kids, we will train up our kids in a different way and we won't have apples falling to the ground and training our children up to be just like we were. We will have our kids have a new opportunity and they will have a brand new way of life and we'll be able to train them up to be good citizens that I couldn't have done without the treatment that I got. And when I look back, all I can say is I thank God for saving me, but now what can I do for the next person? And what can we do for the kids? Because the kids are our next generation, and we've got to get them kids to be trained up into a way that they won't be in the same cycle. Because a lot of the kids don't have the same loving family that I had. I had a stable husband who could watch the kids. I had an opportunity to go to treatment, but a lot of these mothers with children don't have that same opportunity. And I would for sure love to see this happen because it is a passion that I have. You're welcome. Are there any questions for the speaker? No, thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak to this issue? Is there anyone else who'd like to speak to this issue? You can pull the microphone down so it's you I can reach it a little. I don't know if it'll go that far. No, yeah, I'm well. pretty sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I live right about here on the map. I've visited with my neighbors all the time, and I move a lot of yards, so you visit quite a bit. Everybody was real excited about Hope coming, and they're the long is just up the road. The police go by all the time. We got kids riding bicycles in the front yard. They come trick-or-treating, and we welcome the chance for the children to not sleep in the cars this winter. Thank you. Can you, just for the record, list your name and address for the... Rhonda Hudson, uh, 2215 Moholt Drive. Great, thank I've you. I've owned the property since about the year 2000, and... Um, Everybody was real happy about it. They said it's it's about time. We don't, Eau Claire doesn't have enough places for all the children that need your help. So what they do do, at least it starts somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it's it gets really cold in the winter. I, I just can't imagine those kids sleeping out in the vehicles with their parents because they don't have family or friends that will help. So we welcome them. Very good, thank you. Are there any questions for the speaker? I don't see any. Thanks okay. for coming forward. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak to this issue? I'll leave the mic down. Yep. 
please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Valerie Javney. I live in uh, 2341 Moholt, which is directly behind the apartment building, directly behind. I've been there 10 years. Um, as you age, you realize that the coming generations of young people need more guidance. If you watch TV every day, you see that everything seems to be falling apart. And if we don't help our young people, there isn't much hope for us old people. Uh, so I am in favor of them uh, moving forward with this project. I think it's a very worthy project. Uh, there's a lot of people that need help out there, and, and uh, if we're Christian at all, we should extend our hand. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Well, before you go, let's see if there's any questions. I don't see any. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak to this issue? I'll put mine up. Very good. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Tim Pabish, uh, 6176 188th Street, Chippewa Falls. So, um, I uh, just recently got on the board of directors of Hope Gospel Mission. Uh, been involved uh, over the last several years, uh, both in uh, the potential men's center that'll be uh, constructed hopefully within the next year. But uh, um, the uh, opportunity I've had to be on several different types of uh, nonprofit associations and. Um, be involved uh, in the Eau Claire, Chippewa, uh, and our whole community. Um, this is uh, probably one of the um, most worthwhile, uh, I think, organizations I've been involved in. And what this facility will do for the whole community um, is uh, incredible. It's credit, Craig has already stated that this is a solution. It's not a, just a Band-Aid and a fix. And location of this facility is ideal with the other operations that Hope already has uh, with the opportunity for um, the people that will be using this uh, both for the children to go to school, um, the transportation that's located there and then uh, with the uh, uh, center that's across the road for you know work training and so forth to again get people to be able to do and live a full and natural life again is a great, great location. Um, it's a great transition, I think, from the commercial that's already in this area and into the residential. And I think you've already heard that most of the neighbors there are very much in favor of this. So, any very, questions? Very good. Any questions for the speaker? Thank you. I don't see any. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else who'd like to speak to this issue? My name is Jeff Reby. I live on Francis Street in Eau Claire, but I have a business, uh, 1717 North Claremont Avenue. And I just want to make a couple of points about this uh, facility and the idea that of what they're doing. My business is a heating business, and um, we're extremely busy. We, we're, we appreciate that. I end up all over town. I work for businessmen, professionals, I work on rental property. I see a lot of life where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. I've been repairing a furnace while the police were trying to get a, a woman out of a house that was so high on drugs she couldn't get off the floor. Um, I've been places where children are outside playing and the moms and dads are, or moms, it seems like moms most of the time are, um, in the house oblivious to where their children are, what's going on. And one of the things that I've observed is that when a mother loses her kids um, for drugs, it's almost a catalyst for her to be able to take more drugs. She doesn't have responsibility, which is an excuse, for her to take more drugs or to be angry. And I think a facility like this that's geared to taking in the moms with the kids is a is really really a important i think that uh, it's disappointing that they that it's this small the another thing that i see around town is there's people on drugs everywhere everywhere every neighborhood in the stores i'm a conversationalist i'm a human interest person i'm not a 
expert. I'm not a psychiatrist. Um, unfortunately, I've learned a lot of the symptoms through different experiences of what people look like, how they walk, how they conduct themselves. And um, honestly, I don't know what we're going to do as a city, as a, as a region, but there's an epidemic. And this is really important. This is really, really important. Thank you for coming forward. Are there any questions for the speaker? I don't see any. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else who'd like to speak to this issue? Hi, Caitlin Moran, 706 7th Avenue. I didn't plan on speaking, and I'm really horrible at public speaking, but... Um, I grew up with two alcoholic parents, and thankfully both of them are now sober, and my mom is 10 years sober, which is fantastic, but like I tell some people, um, I'm 22 and I've known my mom for 10 years, and a lot of growing up I saw her in ways that I probably shouldn't have, and I think that a facility like this is great for kids who need to see their parent as their hero. And now I do see my mom as my hero. but. There was a long period of time when I just saw her as like a nuisance or somebody who was sick. And when kids have strong parents that are willing to fight and they're seeing that every day and they get to the opportunity to, you know, go to meetings with their family or just grow up with their parents being healthy in a facility that has structure and has, is healthy, I think it's just, it's a wonderful thing. Very good. Thank you. Are there any questions for the speaker? I think the whole audience has impressed us. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else who'd like to speak to this issue? Is there anyone else who'd like to speak to this issue? I'll give one last try. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? If seeing none, I will close the public hearing and I'd be looking for a motion. I move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Commissioner Mitchell. Thank you. Uh, I'll be voting in favor of this uh, uh, series of recommendations. I think that the applicant has certainly met the relevant criteria from the comprehensive plan. Uh, they've also met, in my opinion, the rezoning criteria. Uh, and uh, I think that their outreach to the public and the neighborhood has been thorough and obviously quite effective. Uh, so uh, I appreciate all the work that they put into preparing for this uh, uh, event tonight as well. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? I don't have any lights. Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, next item on our agenda for public hearing for recommendation, a rezoning from TR1A to R1P at 4517 Harless Road. Uh, this is the property, it's on the east end of Harless Road. And there's R1 zoning you know, all the way around it. And that's an area photo showing there is an existing house on a large lot and single family homes surrounded. This is now being built out also with uh, single family homes. And this is the uh, preliminary certified survey map uh, for the property uh, showing the existing home on one lot, a flag lot for a second home and then a proposed third home on a third lot. Uh, again, lot one has the existing home on the property. Lot two is a flag lot. It does meet all our uh, zoning code provisions as it pertains to flag lots. In lot uh, three shows the placement of the home, only it's back at about a 60 plus foot setback. That does put it in line uh, with the property immediately to the north. 
Uh, normal setbacks only 30 feet and at that uh, distance uh, the, this lot doesn't have proper lot width and that's why they're rezoning it to an R1P to allow a variation in lot width. It is actually an 80 foot wide lot once you push the home back and put it in line uh, with the property immediately to the north. Uh, the change in lot width is recommended for this situation simply because it gets the homes in line with um, one another as you place them on the property. The comprehensive plan identifies the areas being appropriate for low density residential development and we are recommending approval with this attached CSM being the general development plan for this rezoning. Are there any questions? Are there any questions for Daryl? I don't see any, thank you. Is the applicant here? If you'd like to come forward. Hi, I'm John Holsinger, and I currently live at 2117 Taft Avenue in Eau Claire. Are there any questions for the applicant? I have one if no one else does. The house that they've done this shadow of that will line up with the house directly to the north mm -hmm. of it, is that driveway going to come out onto the cul-de-sac or is it going to be an easement onto that? No, and that's the reason for the flag lot. We, we didn't want to do an easement of any kind. Most homeowners don't want an easement. Mm -hmm. They want to own that sure. property. And so that's the reason that we ended up with a flag lot. You know, the whole property is about two acres. And in talking with some of the neighbors, they were real concerned that we were going to try to put in, you know, multiple lots or, or get it rezoned for, for multi-unit or something. Mm -hmm. And no, that was not our intention at all. We we're just trying to put two additional homes on a two-acre parcel. But the only way to get, because of where that existing home sits, it made it really difficult to get to that southeast corner, if you mm -hmm. will. And so that's why we, we came up with the flag lot working with the surveyor. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? I don't see any. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak to this issue? Is there anyone else who'd like to speak to this issue? My name is Paul Holsinger. I'm John's son. I used to live uh, on Quail Ridge Road, this property here. And we, together we talked about what to do with this. And there was a potential to split this up into five or even six lots. We really didn't want to do that. A lot of these people that live in these adjacent properties are still my friends. I, I like them to keep, my, keep them as my friends. Um, there was a way for us to redraw this with some odd shaped property lines and not have a flag lot and meet mm -hmm. you know standard setback and and lot width requirements but it didn't make sense because you end up with a very irregular shaped lot and so that was the other reason for this longer driveway through here to get to that flag lot i just wanted to point that out okay great Are there any questions for the speaker i don't see any thank, thank you, you. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Good evening. My name is uh, Derek Calamini. I actually also live in the area right here, which is directly across from the lots. I've spoke with both John and Paul. Uh, they seem to be doing a very reasonable job in a situation that could be a lot worse for a neighbor. Um, in a development where you have a reasonable individual trying to do a reasonable thing, um, it doesn't always happen. So I'm here to support them. And I don't have anything else to say unless anybody has a question. Thank you. Are there any questions for the speaker? I don't see any. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Is there anyone else who'd like to come forward? We'll give it three tries. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing and I'd be looking for a motion. I move we approve the rezoning. 
And I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? I don't see any. Um, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. The third item on the agenda, um, I will mention, but then I understand it's been withdrawn. Do I need to mention it? That it was on the agenda? Okay. So the third item on the agenda for public hearing for recommendation was a rezoning for, from RMP to C1P at 1814 Bellinger Street to rezone a property to allow a child play center, but the applicant has withdrawn that application at this time. Yes, and it's a noticed hearing. There might be folks here okay. that received the notice. They need to hear that it's has been uh, withdrawn. Okay, so it has been withdrawn at this time. And we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is for approval, a preliminary plat at Faunus Acres. Did I pronounce that correct? Uh, this is the property located on the north side of West Vine at uh, Preston. And the surrounding area is all single family or vacant. Some of the homes are in the town of Union. And that is the preliminary plat again, West Vine and Preston. Uh, it creates 10 lots uh, for single family uh, development. It does dedicate one out lot to the city for stormwater. All these lots do meet the design standards of an R1 district. It does extend uh, South Hoyam Lane through as access to seven of the lots. We have sent utility easement requests to Excel, AT&T, and cable to be shown on the final plat. We did attach the city engineer's report. We've recommended approval with conditions. They indicate the utility easements on the final plat in compliance with the recommendations of the city engineer's report, which include entering into a development agreement for utilities and uh, providing drainage calculations. Are there any questions? Are there any questions for Daryl? Uh, Commissioner Peterson. Why, why does that... Um proposed street just dead end and not cul-de-sac into a, a, a circle. Into where? Up here? Yeah. This this extends all the way through north to, can't think of the name of the street. What, Frank, <laughs> Frank Street? Poyam, all the way up to the next street up here. Yeah. This, this plat uh, was recently approved by Planning Commission and that will extend the street all the way north to the next street. Okay, it does go all the way through. Yep. There. Okay. Are there any other questions for Daryl? I don't see any at this time. Is the applicant here? If you'd like to come forward. Sure. I'm Dan Knowlton. I work at Kramer Land Design Studio. Any questions for the applicant? I don't see any. Thank you. Okay. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone who'd like to speak to this issue? Is there anyone who'd like to speak to this issue? If there's no one who'd like to speak to this issue, we'll close the public hearing and I'd be looking for a motion. I move for uh, acceptance of the uh, preliminary plat with the staff recommendation. Very good. I'll second. Very good. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. Next item on the agenda for approval, site plan, Candlewood Suites at 39, I mean 4937 Bullis Farm Road. Uh, this is the property at the corner of Bullis Farm Road and Oneiris Court. It's the new Holiday Inn. It's the former Globe. There's apartments now across the road. Big office building going up over here. Uh, 
and there's the site plan uh, showing the suite, hotel, and the parking lot, site access on both streets. And there's the building elevations. Uh, that's a four-story, 81-room hotel. Its required parking is 86 stalls. They show a 91-stall parking lot on their site plan. Uh, their landscaping is a mixture of street trees and foundation plantings. Those street trees are subject to city forester approval. They do need to add a four-stall bike rack. Uh, they do need to provide a pedestrian link from their sidewalk out in front of the building out to uh, the sidewalk on probably Bullis Farn Road would make the most sense. They do have a trash enclosure on the back of the site. Uh, they do note their exterior lighting is wall packs. They'll need to meet city standards. Uh, they do show some directional signs here and here, uh, which are allowed as directional signs, but will need to meet C3 district standards. They have some flagpoles that are within a setback and they'll need to be moved back. We will review those as part of the sign permits for the property. Site grading and drainage and traffic are reviewed with other services of the city within the report. We would note that a trip generation analysis needs to be submitted for city staff to determine that this proposed use is similar to the uh, overall uh, traffic study that is done for this area. Uh, we provided a draft letter with conditions for plan commission consideration. It states provide two copies of revised site plan, providing that pedestrian link, providing a four stall bike rack, engineering approval of drainage. They do need to provide or obtain a storm sewer easement from the adjoining property to convey their drainage across Holiday Inn site. We need that trip generation analysis for staff review. The exterior lighting needs to meet city standards and that sign and flagpole will review with permits. Are there any questions for Daryl? Commissioner Peterson. What happens if they can't get the uh, drainage easement from the Holiday Inn? First, I believe they're working together on that. Um, but when the uh, owner's court was constructed, there was a storm sewer that was brought up with a stub to this corner. Um, turns out this is the low corner of the site. And so rather than fight to bring it back to here, they're choosing to go this way. If they don't get that easement, they could try and get the similar easement from Goal, or uh, from what was the Globe University, or they can install this pipe back to where their service is. So they do have options. It just costs a little bit more money. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Daryl? I don't see any. Thank you. Is the applicant here? Good evening again. Tim Pabish, 6176 188th Street, Chippewa Falls, uh, Wisconsin. Um, I'm one of the owners of the property along with uh, Royal Construction as a builder of uh, the property. Um, we, we agree with all staff recommendations. Uh, we will be performing a traffic study and for uh, staff's review. Uh, regarding the uh, stormwater easement, uh, we already have a draft of that um, with the adjacent property owner of which we are. We own both properties, so I mm. think we'll get a, be able to get it done. So. Okay, very good. So, um, other than that, uh, uh, we've already started the uh, revised uh, site plan, um, basically showing the uh, pedestrian crossways. There's no issue with that. The flagpoles will move over to the east side and make sure we're out of the easement areas. Um, bike racks will be located on the property as well. So, any Very questions? Good. Are there any questions for the applicant? I don't see any. Thank you. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone who'd like to speak to this issue? Is there anyone who'd like to speak to this issue? Is there anyone who'd like to speak to this issue? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing, and I'd be looking for a motion. I'll move approval with staff recommendations. Thank second. you. We have a, a motion and a second. Any discussion? Nobody's raising their hands tonight. Um, seeing none, I will call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 
All right, next item on the agenda is for discussion and direction code compliance items. I don't see any. Any future agenda items? Any additions or corrections to the minutes? I'll call the meeting adjourned. I feel like there must be. This program was brought to you by a cooperation between NewsWorks and the City of Eau Claire. A transcript of this meeting is available for the hearing impaired. It will be available within seven days of this telecast. Call 715-839-4912 or TDD 715-839-1689 or write Eau Claire City Clerk, P.O. Box 5148, Eau Claire, Wisconsin 54702-5148. NewsWorks is made possible by continuing community support. If you would like to volunteer or make a donation, please contact us via phone at 715-839-5067 or online at valleymediaworks.org.